Aussie Rugby Show for 2020, brought to you by Extra Hop Stops Breaches 84% faster. I'm Lou Ransom, joined as always by these three. Guys, before we get into it, Extra Hop, can we just give them a little bit of love? We can, they we have sure been we will. such a great support for this show without for the Extra Hop, season. this show doesn't make 29 episodes. That's I right, mean, yeah. without, That's the, without the crew at uh, EH, it doesn't happen. So thanks to the guys there and girl, Acacia as well, for uh, getting us over the line. But here we are. In the first week of December, through 29 episodes, and we're still smiling and having the time of our lives. We started on Zoom. Yes. Do you remember yeah. back that far? I do remember back that back far. Back in isolation. It wasn't great back then, was it? Some dark moments. I was a painter back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How'd that go? Oh. About as good as my, my looking for a job went. <laughs> <laughs> Not that well. Um, well, we are, we've are we upgraded. We're back at Rugby Australia. This is like a home away from home for us at the moment. But great to be back here. Uh, let's get into what got you across the weekend. Drew, what got you? Look, what got me was um, just seeing a couple of legends going at it. Uh, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. Uh, look, a couple of 50-year-olds, and it was marketed as that. I think a, a, a few people have said, just looked like two old guys having a punch up. That's what exactly what it was. But it was just nice to see they still had some. Like you could see some of what they had in their prime in in the way that they moved. And I don't know. I just I, I enjoyed seeing Tyson going in there again. And he's like little black trunks and he's. Do you know it was Shark and... Week as well? So before that, I watched him go into a in the water with some sharks. It was called Rumble on the Reef. Oh, really? It was part of Shark Week. Mike Tyson. It was an epic Mate, watch too. Tell you about Rumble on the Reef. He was on the reefer before the fight. <laughs> was he? <laughs> so admitted. He went. He said he's, he's just a smoker, unapolo unapologetic cannabis about just cannabis, just on it. So he's like, he fought high on cannabis. Well, I don't know how high he was, but he CBD definitely had it like in proper like. No, he was on the, well, Snoop Dogg was puffing away before they went into the ring, so. Saw, saw Snoop Dogg once they in New York. They had all in their, uh, had all in their system. What, what got you? What got me was an, an article in the Herald today that said that two of our friends here, Lou, are going off to Channel 9 and haven't said anything. They didn't tell us these things. Didn't tell Mate, us anything. If, we, if you went by everything that was in articles, I'd be super rich. I'd sign some big deal in France. I don't believe any of that okay. shit. Not true, Sean? I haven't got a clue what you're referring to. <laughs> you're don't don't read the paper. He's not winning yeah. any sort of Grammys or... No, not Grammys, not or Oscars. To, you know why? Because yeah. I'm battling a case of gout right now. That's what's got me. As oh. we speak, my right foot is on fire. It is so hard to describe You should take your socks I'm off. Right and, oh, sorry, no, you don't actually own socks. So yeah. that, that would Maybe help. wearing thongs all the time is not a great play. Um, the other thing that got me is... Uh, the way that the rugby community came together last week around an article popped up on Facebook. So there's this guy at Manly who's a veteran, 378 games, five decades, called Rusty, wears pink shorts, one of the greatest men you'll ever, ever meet. Played fifth grade two years ago as a 71-year-old Luke. Seriously, he's running the, he's running the touch line. Yeah, every year, couple every of injuries weekend. up front, goes, I'm good to go, throw me in, gets out there, he goes, don't you guys take it easy on me. Go as hard as you can. That's how I like it. Anyway, he's battling lung cancer earlier in the year. Rusty. Gets diagnosed, rusty. Yeah. Trying to um, get some exercise in ahead of the operation. Walks Collaroy Beach during the biggest swell that's hit the coast in like 50 years. Gets slammed into a bunch of rocks. Oh. This is how hard Rusty is. Comes out of the other side, <laughs> walks up the beach. The lifeguard that said, not on duty, sees him, goes, oh, I'll get you an ambo, Rusty. you got to get out of here. you got to get you up to the northern beaches. He goes, no, nah, I'm sweet. Walked it off, 2Ks home. <laughs> Turns out he had eight broken ribs, a broken wrist, had to be needled back together, put back together again. Now going, gets over lung cancer, now going through bone cancer, has an operation oh, next geez. week. But the way that the rugby community in the northern beaches, even you and the other guys who'd, um, who'd seen him throughout the years at Shoot Shield level, came together to offer him words of support, was remarkable. Well, I, don't, I, love I, don't the rugby know, I don't know Rusty. I only know of him. I've seen him for You've 20 him, years yeah. and I've seen him play for you know, that whole time. Yeah. And he's, as, he's older than most people's grandparents, but he's the guy that's running the flag at 9am and he's still doing something at 5pm. So, yeah, we wish him all so the best. It was a nice article. Rugby, rugby, just yeah. the rugby community coming together. I love it. I just love it. Good people. Tri Nations, Rocks and Diamonds. And because it's the last show of the year, guys, we're going to include the entire Tri Nations okay. tournament if you want to. Can we add Bledisloe, the first Bledisloe's in there too? Sean, you can do what you want. But Cheer. what I'm going to do is Go. I'm going to touch on the, the game of the weekend. I just thought it was unfortunate, disappointing to see the Argentinians get held to nude. 38-0. Uh, 
I just think they deserve more given what they've been through and to get here and to front up and to be here and make this Tri-Nations what it is uh, and what we've all enjoyed over the last few months. And, um, yeah, and just to see them, I don't know, just not have that sort of energy that they had in those first two games that they had against uh, the All Blacks and then also the Wallabies. There's wholesale changes. I know that they had also were affected by the passing of the great Diego Maradona the night before. There's just so many things that were working against the Argentinians. And it was, yeah, it was disappointing to watch them go um, out in that, well, not out in that fashion, but to see the, 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 the scoreline blow out in that fashion. What about you, Steve? Well, my diamond of the whole tournament was their win over the All Blacks yeah. uh, against all the odds. Like, if we think about it, they hadn't played, they'd been told, you know, they'd, South Africa couldn't come because they didn't have enough prep time. It almost, I think it was like 26 people in their squad had COVID two months before they even got together as a team. Players and staff were in hotel rooms, sp spending time away from their families to avoid getting COVID or just to be in bubbles. It was just a mammoth effort. I, th I thought the result from that game against the All Blacks is the best in the history of their rugby union. Yeah, just, some, just quickly, sometimes we talk about fractions in teams. Do you reckon there might have been like the people that had COVID were a bit, you know, turn ah. their noses down at the people no. that didn't Except have COVID. WhatsApp no, groups. No, yeah. Yeah. What's that? Groups. <laughs> you, know, you guys didn't get it. You, know, <laughs> well, you think negative. you're better than us? Or? So a little quick insight. I saw Mario Desmond during the week and he's still yet to determine who the host is. It's something he wants to do. Oh, Just he's that, trying they, to... Who's patient they zero? They can't work out who patient zero is. <laughs> oh, yeah. who so teams always be? want to find out who patient reckon, zero is. They won't play this weekend. Kobe would be too scared to go after Pablo Matera. Go over to go, I'm all right. You don't respect me. I'll play for my country. Speaking of, I'm going to go back to that first game of our international season between Australia and New Zealand. Wellington, one of the most engaging, incredibly gripping test matches I can remember seeing coming out of that last shot at the post from Hodgie. Yeah. Just caught the paintwork, but man, oh man, what a game. And they got us rolling for the for the whole Tri-Nations and Bledders. And how things could have been so different from you so know, five centimetres in the crossbar. And I think everyone was out of their seats at that moment. Oh, like it, for, so it, it seemed like that kick, well, I mean, it was a long way out, but it seemed like that kick was in the, the air for a hell of a long time because we're just like waiting for it. And then, bing, like nearly knocked that, that post over. Lou, what do you got? Um, I like the fact we saw a lot of the, the good uh, Wallaby backs that are quite young get a, get a chance. I know you'll say it's not a development team, but I like the fact that there was yeah. something to like about a few of them. And I feel like if we just had Tamur and O'Connor for this back end of the tournament too, without being injured, that would have made a big difference. Absolutely. I mean, I think there's a lot to like and, and there's, a, there's a bright future on the horizon. I just think, I think sometimes we, we hide behind the four-year cycle, World Cup cycle, and, you know, forgive us for these results until, you know, because yep. we're, we're working towards, you know, mm. France in 2023. We're, a, we're not a development team, we're a national team, so it doesn't matter. I, I, like, it's great that we've got youth coming through, but it doesn't matter what age they are. That's yeah. like, if they're wearing the jerseys, because the, they're the best, and that's yeah. what these guys are. They're the best in, available to the country right now with the, the situation in terms of selection. So they've got to go out there and perform to how they want to perform. Like, don't, don't get me wrong, it's not, our expectations aren't any greater than the ones that they would put on themselves. Mm. But I, I just think we, we missed a great opportunity to, to try and claim that Tri-Nations trophy by the draw against Argentina a couple of weeks ago. And youth can't be an excuse for us moving forward. My last rock, very quickly, ooh, very quickly, ooh. very quickly, is no more test matches between Australia and New Zealand in Sydney. Can I know. scrap them, I know. throw oh. them in the bin, take them. I don't care if they're Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Darwin, yeah. everywhere. Melbourne. Melbourne. Darwin for the weekend. Yeah. Care, Alice no dramas, just no more mm. Sydney. Byron. Please. And Myra, Noosa. South Africa, not making the trip out. Imagine how good. Um, the Tri Nations yeah. are good, and I think yeah, it was great we could get this yeah. international event going the double during header. COVID times. Oh. Can yeah, you imagine? The way it was going to run this tour this year, you know, it would have been. It would have been... It's like a festival. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Festivus for the rest of us. And Argentina have proven it could have been done, but South Africa, they chose otherwise. And initially, I, uh, as it's gone on longer, the more and more I've sort of looked at how Argentina have gone through the tough times and thought, mm. yeah, it could have been done, it should have been done. Well, guys, before we get into a weekend forecast, one of the great partners for this show over the last few months, VB, have been running a, a great competition. We're so thankful for it. We're going to announce the winners right today. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Winner time. Who have we got? We have got the winners of the VB Cool Boxes, the Cases, the Budgie Smugglers, David Shaw, Jeremy Muller and Matt McGoldrick. Get right. Yes. What? Well done. Yeah. And all they had to do was throw in... 
Taz VB and the BWS get a case delivered and bam. Really? I they're with us now names. with ice boxes. I thought you just had to down plenty of them. Wow. <laughs> I thought I was in for a chance. They'll give you a chance to give you some gout to go with it. <laughs> who, so that leaves us with a question. Who won the major prize? Can I have a drum roll, please? Tell them the prize, mm. Tell them the prize. Major prize. OK, do you want to know the prize first? Yeah. It's the VB Cool Box, the VB Cases, the VB Budgie Smugglers. And remember that massive prize of $2,000 oh. World Rugby Shop First voucher for their rugby club? Amazing. It is not, don't lie. Uh, Jamie Sprague. Sprague. Oh, yeah. Sprague. And guys, ha this, check this out. How good was this entry? This is yeah. a great Amazing. Oh, no. effort. This is a Notice all the VBs have bottle caps on them still, so they still got to get plenty. Not just that, the lighting around the barbecue mm. is. I Special. think that's been professionally taken from the Sprague man. Very And they've Sprague also gone for the. Um, AstroTurf, no, not real yeah. grass. Mm. I know. What are your thoughts on that? I, 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 I guess hot in summer. Not yeah. good if you Would have been hot in the weekend. Oh, I wonder. will say this, Sprague man, massive supporter of uh, Tars, so it's gone to a very good mm. home. He's always throwing questions in, he's always interacting, so Sprague man, winner, rugby time for VB. Cha-ching. Okay, well, let's dive into the weekend forecast now. Wallabies up against Argentina, guys. The Wallabies can still win this whole thing. 101 points they need to win by? Maybe if they go out in the middle with a willow or something and try and <laughs> hit a few boundaries or a six or a four or something. But I think if we're looking at it seriously, there's no chance that either of these two teams are going to win, even though mathematically they can. Um, I think they're just going out there to play for pride for their, for their jersey. Wait, and for so their if nation. Australia have got to win by 101, what do Argentina need to win by? 93. 93, and that'll get them there. OK. <laughs> yeah. Hoylesy? Oh, it's going to be a cracking game. They're going to be looking for points. So. <laughs> it's probably going to be like 6-3 or something. I'm just thinking yeah. over. That's what's sort of jumping in my head at the moment. Uh, bet responsibly. Uh, it is weird seasons where we're talking about rugby and, and yep. there's cricket going on at yeah, the same time. Yeah, if Steve too, Smith in the side, we might be chance. Put smudge out there. <laughs> um, so motivation for this game, if it is essentially a dead rubber, if we're talking about those those type of score lines, who's the more motivated side and why? I don't think there's, there's an answer to that. I think both teams are equally motivated. They're still going out there to represent themselves, their country, the jersey that they've earned and they've, um, they're going out to represent. So, I mean, it's, it's us in the media that dub things dead rubbers. There's never a dead rubber no, when you're all going yeah. out there to play. So, um, you know, we'll hear about it, we'll read about it, the, the dead rubber yep. moniker, but it's honestly nothing like that when you're preparing for it, when you're running out there for it. So, I, I mean, what do you think, Steve? I don't think yeah. anyone would be more motivated or less motivated than each other. No, you're playing a test match. Like, there's, yeah. there's still a um, win and loss to be gathered from some team. And there's no way in the world that both sides, you know, Argentina have their families back home. They've left them for months and months. They've sacrificed an enormous amount this year just to have rugby on our screens. Mm -hmm. The Wallabies, some of those guys have done the exact same. Some yeah, of those yeah, guys true. have been you know, well, from Melbourne Rebels. Well, Tommy last week said he'd been out of a suitcase for nearly six months. Look at Who's the, that? The Tommy Wright with us last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Said the yeah. same thing, yeah, yeah. The Rebels guys, they've been yeah. away yeah. through all yep. Super Rugby now and through all the... Test rugby, so. And the last test of the year is almost the one where you, because you know, like you've you've got to give it everything. You've got a few weeks off after this. It, it's almost one of the more exciting ones of the year because you just got to, you literally just you've got nothing empty, to worry yeah. about. Like you go as hard out as you can, and it's you go as hard as you can because you know you're going to go as hard as you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. and you, you, the other <laughs> thing as well, like you're always one game away from not getting picked again. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the Wallabies and Argentina like they're going to pick their best side. Talk any talk of resting players or giving some guys yeah. a go because you've been good throughout the camp and we appreciate it, mate. So you don't like, think that will happen at all? I don't think it should. Like, Definitely no, shouldn't. I don't think it, like Dave Rennie wants to start a winning culture in this side. Like mm -hmm. he's desperate to do it. Mario Desmond's trying to do the same. So no way in the world. Like there's you hold on for, for dear life if you if you if you're a player and you're slightly injured or slightly sore, you don't tell anyone this week. You want yeah. to play this game. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, again, there's started some conversations through socials and media and that sort of thing, asking whether they reward some players that have been in camp for mm. the duration that have done well and turned up and, you know, all that good attitude and all that sort of stuff. Like, you should have that no matter what. Like, you mm. should turn up. But no, at no point should a jersey be just handed to you because you've done your job. Yep. Like, mm. you, you need to earn it. And I would hope and expect this weekend Dave Rennie's going to give jerseys to the 23 men that he thinks will get the job done. Um, and, and that might, you know, it, it might be different. My opinion might be different. It might be different to all of our opinions of, of what that might make up. But I just hope that he doesn't give a jersey to someone that hasn't earned it. Worth noting as well, points aren't going to be easy for the Wallabies to get. Like, it took till 60 True. minutes of the game the other yeah. night for New Zealand to break them down. There were a couple of quick turnovers that helped yeah. 
build that big lead. Yeah, the scoreline doesn't reflect the no game. Way, like no way, no way. Defensively, so they're, they're the, gonna the hang stats in there. from Argentina were out really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, they've been amazing. They're, they're going to hang car- in. When yes. you look at a game like that, you think, oh, they yeah. just defended poorly. But is there a attack that they couldn't get going? They couldn't get past yeah. three phases, which just made them defend for so long and they were exhausted. Even the first half um, against the Wallabies, the Argentina and Wallabies, yep. like Argentina were phenomenal in mm. their defensive effort then as well. So uh, what sort of scoreline are we, are we predicting for this? Oh... Conditions will play a big part. I, I think I, I still think points because I think there's a last game of the mentality and there's a desperation not, and and also the fact that they're not playing for a silverware. There's almost less pressure. So the, I think those two teams have a little bit of hopefully have. We know the Argentinians do. They've got like a, a natural uh, flair about how they play mm. with Sanchez at number ten. So yeah. I, I'm thinking it's a high scoring game. I mean, I think everything points to that, but I, except for the fact that the, both these teams have struggled to score tries. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Australia have created opportunities, haven't converted too many of them. Argentina haven't scored a try for a few games now. I think Nico Sanchez, made, oh, he's scored all their, all their points in the last three games because they didn't score any in the last one. But, um, you know, so we're saying that all things indicate, you know, big over, um, you know, overs, high scoring game. Except for the fact that they just I haven't just been scoring. Any. I just Drew's going unders. Yeah, yeah. Going under. I, I think I think we'll go under. Um, I'll just convince you, haven't I? I do. No, I'm with you. Um, I, God, I just hope it's not as hot as it was at the Sydney Sevens. Oh my God, <laughs> if it's that hot, it can't be. off. We'll just nah, go to the it's pub. It's not going to be that. Forget no, about right. it. Um, I reckon it's going to be a great weekend. This is the final time this year we get to do comments corner. I'm a little bit sad about that, Sean. Sad face emoji. Yeah, I don't think Drew's that. too upset about it. No, <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, look, let's get things rolling with Sparkya out of Argentina. Greetings from Argentina. Uh, Louise adds so much beauty and class to the show to counteract Sean and his salmon shorts that were fashionable back in 98. Uh, loving the show, guys, but I had to turn on the captions when Hoyles was talking. Turns out even YouTube's supercomputer was having a hard time <laughs> deciphering what your dribble is. Sparkia, thank you very What's much. What's his name? Sparkia. 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 Yeah, that, 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 I'm, I'm following that. Yeah, he thinks you have no flow. Yeah. No flow. No, no comments? It's a, a fair comment. I, I actually like your shorts. I think it brings out your eyes. The thank pink you. Shorts, but... uh, and on the s- supercomputer? Yeah, I often don't understand myself when... If I were to watch the show back, I would probably <laughs> maybe Which not understand don't. myself at times. No, who watches their own show back? Like, honestly. You haven't watched a single one, have you? No. Uh, Alexander Zaman, as a Belgian, this comes across as the most Australian show ever, and that's a compliment. Great to- content, great show. We're, we're big we're, in Belgium. We're global. Yeah. We're, we're, we're sort of sitting here waiting for the really nasty ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, but like, okay. it's be well, there's a follow-up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'd finish. Did yeah, you want nasty you. ones? Oh, just yeah, did, yeah, yeah, hit some what nasty ones. Got? Keep us in, in check. I've got phone issues. I've got iTunes issues. I'm sorry. <laughs> Storage? <laughs> my phone, my phone <laughs> just froze. It's all those websites oh. that actually want me to help us out with. Uh, rugby Debus says, Hoylesy, this is in reference to last week's show, <laughs> Rugby Debus says, Hoylesy with the zingers this week. Great show. The final zinger, wah wah wee wah, says the Basement Tapes. How about that? It took you 28 episodes, but you finally got rolling last week. What, I was good last week, was I? Apparently. Apparently. I might rewatch episode number 28 then. <laughs> <laughs> and this last one, I'll throw it over to you. Uh, Lou and Drew both. This is from Jim Croy. It says, greetings from Edinburgh, Scotland. Wow. Oh, right. We are truly yeah, global. United yeah. Nations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he says... Uh, Do we have yeah. any Australian viewers? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we don't. Other than Spraggy. Yeah, it's Spraggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, man, I only found you guys a few weeks ago when I was holed up in hospital. I laughed so much, I nearly burst a stitch. And now it's the last episode. I'm so gutted. Oh. We'd love to do it again, but you two have gone to nine, haven't you? So well, that's not going to be possible. You read the paper, depends, that's yeah. what it yeah, says. Yeah. You're not what? there? He's so I gutted, he seen. burst a stitch. Yeah. He burst a stitch. Jeez, so fella. just some hopefully, love for you guys okay. around. Yeah. 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 Hopefully he's recovering well. Yeah, good on him. Who, what was your best comment of the year? Which one, I think the one calling Drew James Corden would take <laughs> some yeah, coffee. That, that broke loose. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually had a, a number of people outside of this show come up and like refer to me as James Corden as well, which... <laughs> like, yeah. You're nasty. Yeah. She would have, like, you'd be in Mean Girls or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just I like that re- my, my re- confidence re- just gets stamped on, my heart gets broken. You're like, <laughs> There was a time that they were in about the colour of his skin, saying it was too pasty. Oh, there's some nasty people yeah. out there. Nasty people. You know what? The good people fire away the bad. They so do. It's yeah. been good, guys. Um, it's been a good segment. Comments yeah. corner, all wrapped for 2020. 
Oh, it's the last show of the year, but guys, we've got another sponsor oh, for this week. They're just flying in, aren't they? Manscaped. Episode um, 29. Where Manscaped. were in episode one, eh? Yeah. Huh? yeah where, where we were on Zoom, Zoom. back then. <laughs> Fighting, pushing our kids out the hallway. You come in episode 29 anyway. Burning on your Wi-Fi. <laughs> Who's going to pay for that? <laughs> I was on your Wi-Fi too for those years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Manscaped. Yeah. Oh, I'm mm. stoked to have him. I've got to tell you, it's a terrific piece of technology. Oh, look, mm, this I, thing. Go on. It does wonder. Look, I can't wait to get this thing off so my curtains match my carpet. But <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. But well, they work. They work. <laughs> oh, really? So my question no is, cuts. before we get into an yeah. area we don't need to be in. I took my rug at the weekend, like that Seinfeld episode, <laughs> none that? of the rug. Oh, the front rug. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Okay. It'll get through a... I mean, if you can, if can get through my rug, it's, I would say it would be able to get through some kind of an Amazonian forest. <laughs> oh, so oh, who needs such it? Such is the power of the manscape. Who I'll, needs I'll it? I'll tell you about a bit of, bit, of, bit of rug work I used to do back in the day when I first started the, in, in the Wallaby it camp. sounds wrong, doesn't Yeah, I know. It? Yeah. But it's but, not. No, but I opened up like a little barber shop for, for the boys when we were on tour. It was called Jackson's. Um, the That's boys would right. just book in and they'd come in. and um, I, Most people would come in and I'd get, you know, do their hair and stuff. But Lottie Takiri used to come in and ask for his back and shoulders to be clipped. So if I had a manscape back in those days, oh. I'd be like, Lottie, come in. I wouldn't even nick him. I just wouldn't. No little cuts. This thing, like, it's honestly, it's as impossible as to cut yourself. Yeah. Like, is that its big cell? Is that like, yeah. a light on it? Oh, it's cutting the hair, but not the so skin. So you can't cut yourself? You just can't cut yourself. Okay. So for those at home, your wheels are protected. So you know what? This could make a... We're kind of close to Christmas. It could make a nice yeah. uh, Christmas gift. And you know what? If you want to um, get involved, you can receive 20% off and free delivery. You've got to use our code, the code for everything, TARS20 at manscaped.com. That'd be lovely. Lovely Christmas You'd gift. like to give that to your man? Maybe I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Final uh, Aussie Rugby Show mailbag for the year. Thanks so much to everyone on social media for sending questions in each and every week. We really appreciate um, everything that you contributed to the show. Uh, first question for this week, Drew. This is for you from yeah. Xavier on Instagram. It says, who would you have on your team for a boat race? Oh, um, for those international viewers, I don't know if they, everyone refers to it a boat race, but I think it's like drink, Move on to the next drink, drink, Teams drink. Four. Basically, four, team, four drinkers. Uh, I'd have to put Nathan Sharp in. I remember when I was cold at uh, University of Queensland, Red Heavies. He was in the um, first grade there, and he would smack a jug of beer in three gulps. Mm. And a I was jug, like, not yeah, just a scoop. Like honestly, I'd just be like, <laughs> wow. I was in awe. So um, I've Sharpie been working Captain towards that. Yeah, I've been working towards it. Oh. I remember, remember the walk? vision that I got. Yeah, someone no, from Manly, some young fella. There's a young oh, Cole, young Cole uh, yeah. Cam Signori that I've got yeah. the, yeah, the vision of. Yeah, I've had him on my team. Yeah. Um, I've never seen anything like it. He's like, he's in the points. Yeah, like yeah. Point I, eight seconds. I wouldn't have Steve. No, mid-strength I'd go pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've actually got three members from the same family. Uh, Owen Finnegan, Warwick War and Pat Phibbs. They're all brother-in-laws. Mm. Yeah, right. And pound for pound, Pat's a lot smaller than them. Like the other guys are six foot six and six foot ten, I think Warwick is. So they're the best three I've ever seen. Um, Need one more, so I'll go your mate. I would Manly. challenge this kid to yeah. take on Sharpie. Okay. Let's get let's, That's let's make it happen. Twenty twenty-one, yeah. all yeah. done. There you go. There you go. Um, Squad goals. <laughs> Rob McGovern on Twitter wants to know where we're all going on holiday. Good question. Next. Oh, creepy. Where are you going? Um, I haven't booked anything. I, I suppose I've got to go up and see my folks in Queensland <laughs> at some point. Say it with so much enthusiasm, Drew. <laughs> oh, I'm well, a big fan of the show, so. See you Luke, soon. Do you and, do you and Bronson get it, go the knuckle Christmas Day? Uh, I know no. you're not a no knuckle. I got excited about this, but we, we had like a, um, like a, it was almost an unspoken rule when we were growing up no headshots. Yeah, right. So you just like punch in the guts and the whatever, but they've blown out a bit more than I have. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I got in there before you guys yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I feel like I'd have some cardio at the moment. They're yeah. really big, are they? Oh, they're not that big. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think I'd have them for cardio, yeah. so yeah, and, and power and, and yeah. just mental edge and yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> just in life. <laughs> Where are you going, Lou? I am going to Queensland <laughs> to oh, see my are? parents. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, not for Christmas, you but can in January. You can get in, obviously? Yeah, you can, um, okay. as of this week. Oh, Palace Okay, yeah. Yeah. Done so Finally. Here we go. Mm. You, Sean? I'll go Seal Rocks. Seal Rocks, you like that? I'm going there at some point. It's epic. It's three and a half hours up the coast from Sydney. One of the most beautiful spots you'll ever, ever, ever yep. stay at. You, yeah, you love just, holidays. You go to one every every He's got 16 week. jobs to work between okay, now and the end of school holidays. You're also going to Los Angeles. Los yeah. Angelina. At, uh, in February, I'll go there. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Got Los my visa review this week. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Hopefully they'll let well, me out of the country. Good luck. Yeah. 
Yeah. Holidays then. We'll keep going with questions. Uh, mm. We've got one more. This one is also for you, Drew, actually. Um, H. Shelley on Instagram. Uh, why did Knuckles drop Drew for the 0-7 quarters? Weren't you the leading try scorer at the Cup? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Knuckles being John Connolly. Mm. Uh, going into the quarterfinal against England. Um, I don't know, he just came to me and just said, mate, we're going with uh, Coopy this weekend. So uh, I, I think I'd scored seven tries at that point. But Not a terrible game to miss that one. No, though. but I don't, yeah. I don't think it was a decision not to start him. It was more the decision of how long he kept you off the field for. That yeah. I was on the bench with you that day. Yeah. It was a hot day in Marseille. Mm. Um, yeah, I just think he probably should have got on earlier. That was my... Th don't know yeah. who for, but yeah. you're in rare form. Like a player, he was in good form. And mm. sometimes you just got to go against better judgment when someone's playing, like, you, what do they call it, a purple patch? It was probably, yeah, uh, yeah. probably the best. I've had some of them in my time. But in all, in all honesty, <laughs> was that probably the best sort of runner form you had in a Wallabies jersey? Oh, uh, yeah, footy-wise, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we are talking about footy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it got so confused when you yeah. start talking about purple patches, but, um, but yeah, I was, <laughs> I was in good form. Oh, shut up, mate. <laughs> What's the next question, Luke? That's it. That's all next. I got for this week. It's a great It's a Yeah. Okay. Aussie Rugby Show mailbag. Done and dusted for the year. Well, something fun to uh, finish things off for this episode and for the year. We're going to hand out some awards for 2020, guys. Uh, Drew, you want to kick things off? Yeah, sure. I, I think I saw one of the questions on social media about um, joining as medalists. It kind of ties in with my breakthrough player of the year. And I thought, um, look, there's been... We, we spoke about earlier. Many players that have made their debuts and come on and just really just ad adapted to this level, um, you know, really well. But I thought Teniello Tupo had his breakthrough year. I thought, you know, talking about YouTube stars, Jake Paul having a fight on the weekend, he was effectively, all of us, we knew him as a YouTube star, mm. as a young kid, right? Mm. And he just had so much expectations, so much hype and everything around him. And, and very rarely do you see someone live up to that hype when it's so great. And I thought that this year in particular, the way he's owned that position at... Queensland level, but then also the way he's just sort of dominated at, at test level, I thought it was his breakthrough year. I know he's, he's debuted previously, yeah. but I thought this year he's really solidified himself around world rugby to be one of the better prop forwards in, in the game, and I just thought he was our best player. And he, it doesn't just stop whistle to whistle. The gold he delivers through yeah. the week on social media. Mm. Mwah, you like the scare shit, kids, oh, He's the best. Yeah. Remember he was camping yeah, for yeah. a bit? He yeah. was camping before big games with his dogs up he above his He also played unit. massive minutes for the Reds this year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like, we often forget he played so many games, 80 minutes. You just don't see that this day and age. Every side has two reserve props on the field, but he would go, I reckon he probably played somewhere between six to 10 games for the Reds this year, yeah. 80 minutes, which is remarkable. You got an award, Sean? I do. Mine's a slashy. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's three <laughs> different slashies. Best headgear, yeah. best number eight, Ooh. and best bloke to call on to play cricket for Australia as well. And Harry Wilson, you're the man. He was outstanding this year, every step of the way. I love the red headgear. We've seen highlights through the week of him playing school cricket where he clubbed a ton off like 20 balls. We might need Guys him this weekend to get that 101 uh, point difference. Mm. To get him up there. He was, uh, Harry Wilson for me this year was just outstanding. I can't wait to see him for another. I mean, that kid's got another eight, ten years left in him at professional level. He's awesome. Yeah, and how he's playing, he's physically imposing himself. Yes. Which, you know, he's a big boy, but he's got a lot of growing yeah. to do. But, yeah, I've been super impressed with him. Who you got? Uh, I'm going to go a ben Benjamin Button award. Oh, yeah? So just for those who haven't seen the Benjamin Buttons... Yeah, well, get a life. Go and watch the movie. It's not for me to tell you what it's about. Watch the movie like it's I a classic. I haven't seen the movie. Oh, you don't watch <laughs> movies. Of course you haven't. Have someone, TV. Someone, but it's someone who gets younger as time goes yeah. on. Yeah. Someone who just... I, is, I, get, yeah. I get the concept. The fine yeah. wine or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Nick White. Like, yeah. Mm. We never spoke about him this year because we kind of snuck into Super Rugby late in the rounds at the Brumbies. Played a few games, but Joey Powell and Lonigan and those guys still sort of played the majority of the, the minutes. But I just thought he was excellent for the Wallabies this season. And... Yeah, I thought his game maturity and his running and kicking and his control of the game was, was excellent. I probably expected Jake Gordon to play a bit more and Tate McDermott to play a bit more in the gold jersey, mm. but for good reason, Nick White was there. I, I think it's a testament to the, the team that he went to. He went up to play for yeah. Exeter Chiefs and they're arguably one of the better, like the smarter rugby teams in world rugby. Uh, like they don't have necessarily the list that some of the other yeah. club teams can can boast around um, world rugby, but they've Rob Baxter and the, the coaching staff and the team that they've got. They just play really smart footy, and I feel like Nick White's learnt that and he's bringing that back and he's uh, adapted that to his game and, and he's adding that to the Wallabies uh, squad at the moment. 
Do you have an award, Lou? I do. I've won the classic uh, best bomb try. Oh, oh yeah. Rico Yuani has yeah. to be for yeah. this year. And he's, as we talked about, still so confident going with the one hand put down at different times of the season after My he won the club try. My still wants some blood from Rico Yuani. <laughs> My punters club. Oh, Pete Miller. They, Pete Miller is not <laughs> impressed still. That after, and they had him any time try scorer, and they hit the roof. They're not going to let He's that go, not welcome on the Central Coast. <laughs> no. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Rico's welcome anywhere else in Australia, no problem. I tell you what. But don't go to Terrigal or Avoca. They will get you. Okay, guys. So you know how I said we've been kind of collecting yep. sponsors for this last and final episode. I got another one for oh, you. We need sponsors. Get right out of town. Called some mates. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Uh, why didn't you? World Rugby Shop. Uh, Aussie Rugby oh, Show. These are good. Merchandise. We got a fashion line Merch. and really? merchandise. Love Finally. Merch. It's taken 41 years, but here we are. You're only 41. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> good. Another zinger. <laughs> so, so how, what I'm going to say about this That's is... That's amazing. We've had such amazing support for this show um, since we started it yep. in the middle of the year. So this is kind of a way, if you want to show your support, you can go to uh, the World Rugby Shop or worldrugbyshop.com, check out the range. Perfect gift for Christmas. Good range, mm. too. It'll be available in the next few weeks. It's Presents? Like that's, that's what my family's getting now. Just a whole bunch of stuff, potentially budgie smugglers, <laughs> branded with TARS across them. Yeah, there's so many options. So uh, that's one thing to really get on board. As I said, if you liked what uh, we've done for this year, that's a way to support us. Uh, guys, this is the last show. We're done. We're at the that's end. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I was, gonna, I was just going to jump in there. I just want to say thank you to all the people that have bothered watching us. I mean, Steve, you're not one of them, but all the people that have, have, have just tuned in and viewed and, no, uh, and commented really and engaged nice. with us on socials, on the YouTube and all of that sort of stuff. I think, I mean, it, it, it literally started for us just back in COVID isolation days, quarantine right in days. the deep darkness of lockdown. Yeah, literally just because we had nothing necessarily to do and we love rugby and we wanted yeah. to do something. And, and it just, it's grown into something because people got around it and people, mm. people viewed and tuned yep. in and, and each week wanted to, to I, see more. And I feel as though it's really Springboard U2 in particular that are like bigger, better I feel things. Like maybe maybe. I feel like positivity. I feel like positivity. I just can't wait if I do get a job to work with some professionals. So you guys are just <laughs> bring me now. Bring me now. We're talking about the crew and all that sort of stuff, but they yeah. do their very best. So we've got to thank them too, of course. <laughs> Uh, guys, have a good Christmas. You Enjoy too, yes. the new year as well. Same to you watching wherever you are watching. Thank you so much for your support for this year. Have a good uh, holiday break. Hope you're safe and well. And you know what? We might do this mm. next year. Who knows? Might 2021, baby. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Enjoying the world.